song they used to sing. Oh, I can't even think of it now, but it was, oh, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords to give. My goodness. Nothing like Jesus. Amen. Amen. My, my, my. If you have your Bible with you this morning, turn to Matthew, the 16th chapter. We're going to read the same Scripture starting out this morning as we did Tuesday night. My goodness, what a anointing was in here Tuesday night. Amen. My, 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 my. I still get all wound up just thinking about it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. My goodness. I want to tell you before I forget, I've got some flyers for the homecoming Saturday. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to take one or two or however many, hang them up somewhere or give them to a friend or give them to somebody at their church or something to invite them. Hallelujah. I think i got about 15 so mm -hmm. after service. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 13th verse. King James Version, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The only version. Amen. The rest of them just mess. Amen. Matthew 16 and 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? I told you Tuesday night, He still asked that question of man today. Yes. Who do you say that I am? You see, in order to be saved, to be in order to be born again, Brother Sleeves, just believing he was a prophet, which he was, but just believing he was a prophet ain't enough. No. Just believing that he was uh, a good man is not enough. Amen. Amen. Amen? Believing that he's king of kings ain't good enough. Right. Got to believe he's savior. Amen? Amen? Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. And that's what he was asking. Now, who do men say that I am? A lot of them will give you different answers. They gave you different answers then. See what the disciples told him? They said, well, some of them say that you're John the Baptist. Amen? Yeah. Some of them say that you're Elias and others Jeremiah mm -hmm. or one of the prophets. Mm -hmm. So you can get people, even people that read the Quran will say, well, you know, he was a prophet. Mm -hmm. He's Amen? Amen? Yeah, he was a prophet, but he was not the Son of God. He was not the only begotten Son of God. And, oh, you're talking about allowing things to creep into the new modern day translations or versions, whatever you want to call them. Many of them today do not say that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It just says that for God so loved the world that He gave His Son or that He gave His only Son. No, He was the only begotten Son of God. Amen. He was God in the flesh, the Word that came and dwelt among us. Amen. He was God yeah. in the flesh. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. And that's the answer He's looking for from His disciples. He said, yeah, I know they say those things, but who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. And Simon Peter... He says, I know who you are, Lord. The Bible says, Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. 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 You are the one that was foretold by Isaiah. Amen. You are the one that was foretold by Ezekiel. You are the one that was foretold by all of the prophets of old that talked about the Messiah that would come, the, the virgin that would conceive and bring forth a man child. You're him. You're it. Amen. You're the one we've been looking for. And Jesus looks at him and says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, in verse 17. He says, Simon, you're blessed to know this. You know, we're blessed today to know that He is the Son of God. Amen. We are blessed today to know that He is God in the flesh, that He is the Lamb of God. When John the Baptist stood there in the River Jordan and he looked up and saw Him coming, and he said, there comes the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We're blessed this morning to know Jesus Christ. We're blessed this morning that we didn't bow on the carpet and kiss the ground and give our praise toward Allah. Amen. We're blessed this morning to know that Muhammad was not God, that He was no more than just the simple man. Amen. We're blessed this morning to know that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We are blessed this morning. Yes. And he tells Simon Barjona, he says, Simon Barjona, you're blessed. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, and this is what I want to get to, this is what we talked about Tuesday night, this is what we want to talk about for a few minutes this morning. 
And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, now he ain't talking about Peter. No. He's talking about Christ. Amen. He's talking about the revelation that Peter had. Upon me, amen, he is the rock. The Bible says he's, there's no argument here. I know the Catholic Church would like for you to think that Peter was the first pope, amen, but if he was, he was the only man to have a mother in law that wasn't married, amen, because he had a mother in law. So they, no matter what, the, 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 the Catholic Church said, listen, that's a pretty big ripoff to get a mother in law, not a wife, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he was not the first pope. Jesus didn't say, Simon, Peter, I'm going to build my church on you, but he's talking about the rock himself, he, yeah. the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected, the, 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 the Christ, the rock that followed the children of Israel in the wilderness and they got their water out of. He's talking about himself, Brother Sleece. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now we talked Tuesday night about these gates of hell. Might help shed a little bit of light on it. But in the Bible, in the ancient cities, it was in the gates of the city that council was held. It was in the gates of the city that courts were held, Brother Sleeves. It was in the gates of the city where business took place. And I gave you some scriptures to back that up. You can write these down. Psalm 69 and 12 and Proverbs 1, 20 and 21. And there's a lot more than that, but those are a couple that will help you to understand that it was in the gates of the city that they, just, that they made plans, Brother Bill. And what Jesus was saying to Peter, He said, I'm going to build this thing on me. I'm going to, anything that's built on me, not just the church, but your faith, your life, your belief, anything that is built upon the rock, which is Christ, the gates of hell, all of the plots of hell, all of the counsel, no matter what hell brings against you, cannot prevail against you as long as you're built on Christ. As long as your foundation is right. As long as you have your foundation laid. And Paul said, no other foundation can be laid than Christ. Amen. He is our foundation. He is who we build upon. If your life is built on Christ, then you will not be overtaken or overcome by the gates of hell, the counsel of hell, the, the plans and the plots of the enemy cannot overtake you. Because he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we talked about how that... that that, that pertained to the church and it had pertained to us and how it pertained to His Word. And that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes this morning. Just a few weeks ago, I read in the news there, it may not have been that long, how that Iran had started a Bible burning campaign. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. How that they said that they must, they must get all the Bibles together. This ain't the first Bible burning campaign there's been. Mm -hmm. I told you then, and I'll tell you now, I said it Tuesday night, I'll say it this Sunday morning, that there have been, there have been greater nations than Iran try to stop this book. Amen? Yeah. There have been greater leaders than the ones in Iran try to stop yeah. this book. But God has promised us in this book that He will preserve His Word from generation to generation. Amen? The Catholic Church tried to stop the English translation from being brought forth through the men, the early men there that, that, that were taking the Latin and the Greek and, the, and were translating so that people who spoke English could understand it. So you didn't have to be fluent in Latin to be able to read the Word of God. They wanted everybody to be able to have a book for themselves, amen? So the Catholic Church tries to stop that. Don't work. No. Amen? Look here. Out of all the Bible burning campaigns with the Bill, out of all of the efforts of the Roman Catholics, out of all of the efforts of the Roman Empire, out of all of the efforts that Satan and, and everything, everyone, every enemy of the cross has ever came up with, guess what I hold today? Yeah. That says King James Version, doesn't it? Yeah. Amen? God said I will preserve it. Amen? I will preserve it from generation to generation. I will keep it. Amen? And 400 years after the date of 1611, whenever it was uh, published, whenever it was gave to the public, we still have it today. Amen? Amen? Because God has promised us He would preserve His Word. No matter what attacks come against the Word of God, they shall not prevail against God's Word. Amen? I realize that religions attack it and that even some people that are in the church say, well, you know, it's a good book, but all of it ain't true. Some of it is just, you know, folklore or just stories, Brother Sleece, that, that don't have, that really didn't happen. They're just got good meanings to them. I'm telling you that from Genesis to Revelation, this is God's Word. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for you and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the Word of God. Amen? No matter how much man tries to change it, no matter how much man tries to burn it, it doesn't matter what you try to do. It's sort of like the monster from the Black Lagoon. Amen? You, you can knock it down, but it just keeps getting right back up. 
up. Hallelujah. But it's a Holy Ghost field monster. Amen. You can try to burn it and it's still there. And they said whatever they took old Polycarp and tied him to a stake and they set the fire to him. They said that it looked like it was this gold that was being tried in a furnace of fire. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this morning, you can't stop the Word of God. All of the plots of the devils, all of the plots of the demons, everything that hell has to offer cannot prevail against God's Word that He has preserved. And it would do us well to know this morning how important the Word of God is. Yes. The enemy knows it. Why do you think I read trying to burn all the Bibles? Because really? they know how important yeah. the enemy knows how important yeah. the Word of God is. Yeah. Amen? Why do you think that the Roman Catholic Church and the leaders of that day tried to stop it by killing the men that were translating it? Because the enemy knew how important the Word of God is for you. And this goes all the way back to the beginning. We can show you this morning how important Satan thinks the Word of God is. Mm -hmm. When he comes to Eve in Genesis, the third chapter. Turn over there. I want you to see something this morning. This would be the first time that the enemy would have contact with man. This would be the first time that he would try and tempt man. And what would he use, Brother Beal? The Word of God. Amen? He would twist it. He would pervert it. He would say it don't mean what it says and it don't say is what it means. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Oh, does that sound like anything going on today? Yeah. Wow. Amen? Most of these preachers got up this morning in their mega churches and they began reading the Bible and it sounded like they were reading something Dr. Seuss wrote because it sure didn't sound like the Word of God. Yeah. Amen? Right. Right. Listen to what the devil does. The Bible says in Genesis the third chapter, now the serpent was more so, I'm trying to tell you this morning how important the enemy knows that God's Word is. That's why all of his efforts have been aimed toward getting rid of the Word of God. Amen? He knows if he can mess with your foundation, anything else you build will be in vain, Brother Sleese. Amen? No matter how good a life you live, if your faith is in the wrong thing, if your hope and your faith is not built on nothing less than Christ and His righteousness, amen, then your efforts are in vain today unless you are built on Christ and His Word. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said all. The first words that came out of His mouth to a human being, as far as recorded in the Word of God, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did you hear that? He's talking about what God said. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking about God's Word. Amen. Yeah. Something that God had told him. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God had said, You shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it. The Bible don't say that part right there. She added that. I'm talking about God didn't tell them that part. Over there in the first or second chapter there. God didn't tell him that about touching it. He told him you don't eat it. But Eve throws in there that he said don't touch it. Amen. So we find what happens whenever the enemy and mankind gets together. They come out with a perverted version of God. That's why that's how we got the NIV. Yeah. Amen. The Council of Hell decided that the King James Version wasn't good enough, so yeah. the NIV is produced, it is published, it is brought forth by two men that didn't even know God, amen, based on their translations. And they come up with something that is perverted, that has some of the Word of God left out. And I'm not telling you this morning, if you don't use a King James, that you're going to hell. I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you, you are in more danger of being deceived than someone who does have a King James. Yeah. Amen? Let me go a step further than that. If you have a King James, and all it does is catch dust at your house or save your seat at the church, you're in danger today too. Amen? Yeah. Because it wasn't given to you for that purpose. Not to be a paperweight on your desk. Not to save your seat from Sunday morning to Sunday night. But so that you could read what thus saith God. Amen? Amen? Amen. 